Hi everyone, we're back. Sorry, I know it's been a long while. July was extremely busy for us. For those of you who are, uh, follow me perhaps on Facebook, you know we went to Alaska for a couple weeks in the RV10. That was just a magnificent trip. For those of you who want to see some of the pictures, if you hadn't, go there on Facebook. We tried to post pictures almost every day. It's just drop dead gorgeous and pretty much an uneventful trip. So that was a lot of fun. And we got back just in time to turn around and go to Oshkosh. And uh, Oshkosh was just a great, great one this year. Uh, rode out a storm Saturday night in a tent with some 60 mile an hour winds. That was fun. But the most fun for me is putting names with faces and seeing a lot of you there. And uh, really enjoyed it. Want to thank you for all the kind words about all the columns that I do, as well as some of these videos. So we're going to try and catch up on some videos, bring you up to date a little bit about where we're at with the hummingbird. It's actually nice to get back on it and manage that yesterday and today. And then we're going to do some videos here. We'll do one today on nuts. As I walk around aircraft at Oshkosh, I can see there's still some confusion on nuts. Not jam nuts, but the different kinds of nuts that go on bolts. So we're going to talk about those. And then somebody also asked me to do a video showing how to remove a rivet, a uh, regular AN rivet, drill it out. So we'll try and get that done this week too. But for today, we're going to look at the helicopter where we're at and take some uh, pictures of nuts and do some explanations, okay? So I kind of don't remember where we were last time, but I'm just about complete with the control system, which is pretty exciting, even though it's all going to have to come back out uh, to paint the interior. But I actually do with the anti-torque pedals now, have nice moving parts. Uh, you can see cables down there. You can see all of this temporarily mounted to the uh, uh, forward bulkhead there. Uh, it was a lot of work. And uh, making some pulley guards here, if you can see those. Uh, maybe one of these nights I'll have to do uh, how do you make pulley guards out of flat sheet. So we'll work on that as well. Okay? So mainly it's been the control system here as of late. And uh, kind of getting ready here. We want to get as much as I can so we can get this interior painted and then put this, some of this stuff in here permanently. So it's too hot to paint right now, so I'm moving ahead with some of the control system to get that done. So let's talk about nuts, all right? There's, just, uh, there's a lot of different kinds of nuts out there, and I'm gonna show you some of the different ones here. So, pardon the pun, but in a nutshell, there's basically three different kinds of nuts. So the typical nut that you're seeing right here is a fiber lock nut. A fiber lock nut can be used wherever the bolt is not subject to rotation. So a good example here is on this pulley assembly. Pulleys have bearings in them, so they spin very freely. So we can just tighten up this fiber nut here, and we'll be fine with that. They're also used on rod end bearings. So if you look right down here, let's see if I can find a rod end bearing for you. There's a rod end bearing, so you'll see on the bottom side we've got a fiber lock nut, okay? There's a bearing inside that rod end bearing, which ca is captured between the arms of that bell crank there, and so it once it's captured tight, the, the rod end spins on the bearing. The bolt never turns. You can see here is another place that we can use a fiber nut. As an example, there's a bearing on this bell crank. So it spins very nice and freely. We can use either a heat nut or a fiber lock nut to tighten that up. Now, what you can use these, I tell everybody, forward of the firewall or aft of the firewall in the case of uh, regular uh, tractor aircraft. These are good, that fiber in there is good to about 250 degrees. So if you're going to use a nut inside the engine compartment, what I recommend is you use what's called heat nuts. You can see these do not have any fiber in them. They are kind of crimped. Now the difference with these are is you can use them in a high heat environment. And you got to be careful because these, when you turn them down on the bolt, they really tear up the threads quite a bit. So what I'll tend to do is just use a spin-on nut. I actually buy a whole box of uh, different size nuts at Home Depot, and I'll spin them on until I'm ready to put something on permanently. 
Again, those heat nuts are used in engine compartments or everywhere you think the heat might be uh, a little high around 250. There's no harm in using these anywhere else. You can use them. They just tend to be a little more expensive. Okay. Now, whenever the bolt is subject to rotation, so where might that be? Let's look over here at brake pedals, and I'll show you this here. You can see right here on this brake pedal, where this let me pan out a little bit so you can see what we're talking about, the master cylinder here, okay? You can see there's no rod end bearing in there. It is just an aluminum tube, basically, it goes up, and a bolt goes through it. So as this brake pedal moves up and down like this, you can see that bolt can be subject to rotation. So what do we have to do? We have to use a bolt with a drilled hole in it. So if you can see that hole right there on that bolt. And then what we end up doing is using what's called a castellated nut. So castellated nuts look like these here. Good zoom up here, okay? These go on, whatever size bolt you're gonna use there. And then a cotter key goes through that bolt and nut and keeps the nut from backing off. Now, yes, you do tighten the nut. Uh, you'll try and align it up with one of the holes in the bolt. Sometimes you gotta add a washer or a thin washer or a thick washer to get it line up and meet the torque spec. And then you put a cotter key in there and bend it over. And let's see, I think I can find one here with a cotter key. I have to go around the other side, but here's one as well. You can see right there, I haven't put the cotter key in there yet, but you can see what one looks like completely on. Okay, and the reason why I haven't put that cotter key in yet is the control system's coming back out. Okay. Now, now heat nuts and fiber nuts come in different thicknesses. The standard thickness is what's called a full size. They're AN365s, right? The smaller ones are AN364s, I believe. Hopefully I didn't get that number mixed up. I'll check it for you. But anyway, you can see the thin ones here on the left, okay? These you can use when the bolt is in shear. So shear means the force is being applied perpendicular to the bolt. So the nut is actually not holding the bolt in place. If you have a bolt that potentially could be in, in tension, you want to use a full-size nut, either the castellated nut or the fiber nut. The fiber nuts also come in half-size nuts. So, where did I see a lot of these problems out at Oshkosh? Come back here and tell you, is on the rudder cables on the RVs. So the rudder cables go back there and they attach to the horn on the rudder. Fine. Those bolts are subject to rotation, and they need a cotter key in there. So for those of you flying RVs, I'll challenge you to go check your rudder bolts. Thanks.